happen. But the devil won't, don't want you to say it. Know why? Because you, you get delivered through the words out of your mouth. You empowered. Then come right around and what the lady said and she thought feeling bad about it. And, and, and probably, because I talked to her, I ministered on the same line that morning. Sometimes your ministry is talking about what you went through. I wish you to see it. You, you was humble enough to tell it. Because see, the Bible says he resisted the proud, but he gave his grace to the humble. When you humble enough to let go of the hurt and pain. I went through some things on my job and I know, I know it's trying to demean me in my faith, but I know who I am. You can't do that to me. You, you, could, you could talk down to a person. If you know who you is in God, it would just roll off. You don't have to say anything. I looked at the uh, uh, the movie uh, uh, last night, Harlem. I said, Sean, order that for me because there were too many commercials. I said, order. What the man said made sense. He said, he said, man, they're killing everybody, killing all my friends, calling, and they got blaming it on me and, 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 and stuff. He said, I'm going to go down there and shoot up the town and kill all of them. The, I like what Richard Proud, and he real calm. He said, you're not going to do nothing. You're going to sit down right now. And I'm going to talk to you. He said, I didn't, I didn't pour into you all this stuff to let you go down as a fool. And they're and they waiting on you and kill you. Sit down. Calm yourself down. Sometimes people have to calm people down. Before you make a great mistake. Because sometimes, you see, it's only take one person. The comment says, sit down, son, let me talk to you. Because you can be enraged and want to hurt somebody. And at the time that you feel like you're right, God will send somebody and say, let me talk to you. For you do something very, very serious. And what they did is on them. But you finna mess up your own story. Amen? Taking matters in your hand. God will call somebody to stand right beside you and say, Sister, brother, let it go. Mm -hmm. It ain't worth it. I don't care if you feel in your heart that you need to say something. Sometimes it's good not to say anything. Amen? And one of the things that we dealt in the lesson last week, and I, and I let probably do it because, but one of the things, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. When you just don't say anything, just being quiet, and, and see the quietness about it, and the, it gives you confidence. It's going to be your strength. You don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. You can sit there and be quiet, and you say saying something when you're quiet. You're saying more powerful things when you're quiet. You don't, you don't have no need to fight in the battle. You don't have the need to say anything. See, just say something about you when you're quiet. You know, when a man walks in there and, and they say, man, one thing about it, when he walks in, he got a spirit about him, he don't say much. But he's talking with not saying anything. You can be justified as an anointed man of God. Because the Bible says, it says in, in Proverbs, one of the main scriptures, and I, I like you because my cousin said it, but he said, he said, even a fool is kind of wise when he what? Hold his peace. Amen? One of the things that a man don't know what you're thinking. So you're a wise person. He can look at, look at you and try to size you up, and you can look up there and, and, and be looking real dignified, and, 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 and he don't know how smart you is until you open your mouth. When you open your mouth and you begin to say everything, he say, that's a fool, that. You can look so wise to him before you open your mouth. But when you open your mouth, you look like a fool. So you don't have no need to fight in no battle and, and trying to impress somebody and trying to make them feel that you're so knowledgeable and so spiritual and, and so, so I want to say it like this here, you got all the degrees more than a thermometer. You can say nothing and, and they'll think you got more degrees. Amen? It's not what we say. It's how we act and how we handle things under pressure. Amen? Amen? And many times, and I wanted to say anything, but the Holy Spirit would tell me when I was on my job, many times, and many tests and trials, and I would pat him. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Many times, if I didn't have God, I would have blown my witness. I would have blown my character. Why? Because you, it's something about ominous. Don't look at it as being uh, 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 just so weak and meek. He said, it's strength under control. Mm -hmm. See, ominous is strength under control. They're handling your things and handling yourself in and under pressure. Mm -hmm. See, pressure is not developed, just developed. It's developed under pressure. Pressure is, is one of the things character is dealing, of dealing with. Pressure develops character. You develop who you are under pressure. Sometimes, even dealing with the president, the things that he went through and handled, they said, let's see how he handled this. Let's heat it up. 
Does he defile the little, little bit? See what, how he handles himself under pressure. That's the mark of a true leader when he can handle himself under pressure. You don't have to impress nobody. But how you handle yourself when you're going through something. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. In other words, a poor in spirit person is humble enough to know who he is. He's humble, but he know who he is. Yes. Amen. He's humble enough to not feel like he have to say something yes. when everybody is is venting, saying how they feel about the economy. I don't have no need to even express where how I feel about it. Whatever it is, it's way way God ordered. And in, in this too could be a time of testing to see where who's really committed to God's word and who is going to drop off. Amen? Amen. Because the, 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 the one of the main things that we need to understand when we are in the will of God, we go through things that others can't go through. Why? Because we go to God when there's a when there's a situation above our understanding that we don't understand it. Above all things, go to God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Delight thyself therefore in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. I can delight myself in knowing who I am and not say anything and, and be as humble and just know, just walk and flow in it. Thank you, Lord. But God the attitude give you that kind of assurance. It just it's not it's not boldness, but it's strength under control. It's not to the point that I'm I'm boasting about myself, but it's it's, it's strength under control, knowing that God can help me in any area where I'm weak in. I can be weak in so many areas, but I know God. God can strengthen me when I begin to read in the Word. So that I read in the Word, it gave me peace and gave me joy. Hey Amen. It strengthened me. Amen. Amen. Blessed are, are those who mourn, mm -hmm. for they shall be comforted. You got one thing about when you mourn for a lost, lost loved one. I think one of the times people need uh, they need love, and I tell people just let them cry. If they need to cry. Don't tell nobody to, to stop crying and and and, and they moaning and and and, and they don't lost the loved one. He said God should. He said they should be comforted. And most of the time, when God will send you a piece about when you lost a loved one, uh, about and God will give you a piece about when we lost our son and and, and, and BJ and, and and a lot of time people look at it as, as, as a bad thing, but he was suffering. He was suffering in, in, in the sickle cell disease, and and, and and we didn't know how long we're gonna be here. But they said when you have sickle cell disease, you you're not gonna be here long. We we didn't know that. So we knew that, but we enjoyed BJ here. We enjoyed him while he was here. We loved on him and everything while he was here. But one of the things I remember, I remember, I'm gonna get off of it, man. And one thing I remember when, when, when I, I, I kind of sensed it, he walked over to one. I don't know if it was Shane, uh, Sean, I mean Sean. He better be Sean, but Sean, because Sean right back right there. He hugged Sean real tight. And I was playing some gospel music. And he walked over to this hug him real tight. And it wasn't too long after that, he passed away. So I looked at some things and some things in my life that, that, that we, we children are here. And I, and I thought about it and when he died, they think he was three years old. And, 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 and I, I'd rather for him to die at a young age. And I think you never, you never really get over it. I, well, I, I, I had to be strong for my wife, but, but when he died at three years old, but a lot of people be praying against your family. During the time when you we going through some things, they know that he was sick. Sometimes you think everybody is with you. Everybody's not. And God showed me something, said sometimes people and they, they don't wish you no well. But during the time when they were glory in him passing away, I'd rather this that he passed away at a young age than wait till he get up way up in the age, forty fifth and die. Sometimes you need to come to realization and everybody gonna leave here. But I, I know he suffered. I know he suffered when he was here. But sometimes our, our people and other people, they, they, they glory in tribulation. And the Bible speaks of it, never glory in tribulation. But God began to deal with me concerning that I'm being my firstborn. That was the firstborn. And when you understand something, when you go to praying, and, 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 and when you pray, and you said, which you, you say, so I, I wish he died. We have people talk like that. And when you call things, I've seen it, I heard it, and I know I ain't always will say it. But sometimes people do not wish anything good. When God showed me, I said, Lord, I said, people just that he said they worse. Sometimes people be so jealous of relationships, they don't want them, they don't want that relationship to work. And and Joel Osteen this morning, I was very shocked when he said this morning, he said something that like, stop believing in roots and all that stuff like what the Bible speaks of witchcraft. But I know for a fact, my grandmother when she was when she was living, my grandmother told me told me some things. And I, I like to talk to her because she would enlighten me. 